Once More with Feeling by Wet Pretzel, read by Ella Max Mabella. Chapter 2 Hermione bumped into Theodonot on a Tuesday as she headed into the lift to meet with Harry and Jenny for lunch, and she couldn't help but think that Karma had finally caught up to her for that boys' course in fifth year. That was the only reason Hermione could think of as to why her life regularly involved interacting with former Slytherins. Said man looked up as she stepped into the lift, and his expression brightened, although the dark sharpness of his eyes betrayed his true motives. Ah, oh, Granger, just a girl I was here to see. Dear greeted with a Cheshire cat grin, and he leaned down in a slight bow to kiss the back of her hand. Tall, dark, poised, handsome, and all the manners of a well-bred pureblood. No doubt he was the physical embodiment of the type of man her great-grandmother Ida had instilled into her to avoid. Unless the man was also old money, as she had called them. Apparently, Grandmother Ida's mornings only went so far as a man's bank account. Hermione only hoped that Theo's status as a newly promised man was enough to forgive her in her ancestors' eyes. Hermione resisted the urge to roll her eyes as she tucked her hand out of Theo's grip. She reached across him to press the button, the lift closing with a shuddered groan, and the pair jolted slightly as the lift started once, twice, and then thrust downwards. Somehow, I highly doubt that not. Aren't these days when you meet with your parole, Aura? How's Aura Fontaine, by the way? Hermione asked, her lips twitching when his suave mask slipped into irritation for a fleeting second. Old? He replied shortly. But evidently, he's not completely lost his marbles because he's approved my probation to be lifted. Hermione must not have hidden the shock on her face quick enough as Theo tittered at her. Honestly, Granger... It was one minor time turner incident. It's not like I was blitting my soul. He leaned in, his grin shark like. Besides, rumor has it you've also dabbled a bit in time meddling yourself. I'm sure Draco would be fascinated to learn what truly happened with that overstuffed chicken inside you. Hermione scolded him and hoped that the mean expression on her face distracted a treacherous blush that had creeped across her neck. Leave it to Slytherin to hold on to a silly school rumor. Leave it to a Gryffindor to think the laws of time magic should apply to everyone but themselves. Theo bit back, not missing a beat. Hermione exhaled in not quite a half and simultaneously raised her left eyebrow and chin and looked at him expectantly. Ron called it her molly face. What can I do for you not? Oh. Theo snapped his fingers, his slick persona back in place, and he reached into his suit jacket to pull out a silver hip flask. Most likely an heirloom, judging from the outdated engraved pattern, and held it out for her to take. Draco left this behind from our gentleman's night the other week. Do be a lamp and return it to him, won't you? The ding, quickly followed by the less than graceful landing to the ground floor, interrupted Hermione's barbed retort to his patronizing tone as she stumbled. Of course, Theo had to reach out to steady her. His own gait showed nary a tremble. Probably had to take posture lessons from the moment that he could support his overgrown big hat, Hermione internally grumbled. Thank you, Hermione muttered, taking the flask with a frown when Theo shook it at her playfully. Why did everyone keep giving her Draco stuff? Why does everyone keep giving me Draco stuff? She repeated out loud as the pack quickly stepped out of the lift before the swarm of early lunchers rushed forward. They just snorted, not wholly unlike Pansy did in her office the other day. Huh? Hermione guessed it was true what they said. People did start to resemble their partners. Quickest way to get things to him is through you these days. Besides, Draco is awfully possessive of what's his grandeur. They planted his feet and stared hard into her face for a moment. Can't keep what's his away from him too long. He gets awfully grouchy. Over a hip flask? Hermione asked in bewilderment. Theo blinked at her, that Cheshire cat grin slowly returning to his features as she hummed. Sure. His eyes searched hers, and Hermione wasn't entirely sure he found what he was looking for before he shrugged. Topic seemingly dropped as he tilted his chin towards the flask in her hand. Just be sure to give that to him when you see him tonight. What makes you think I'm seeing him tonight? Honestly. Who did they think she was, his keeper? Theo snorted again, and Hermione decided the second time around was far less graceful than his fiancés had been. <laughs> Good one, Granger. He snickered and bowed a final time as he turned towards the direction of the ministry exit. Pansy is still waiting for that RSVP, by the way. 
I'm sure your precious books could handle you having one night away from them, if that's what's causing your late hour. You will send your response soon, like a good little lamb, won't you? Thea smacked over his shoulder and tossed her a quick wink as he sauntered off to the ministry building before she could reply. Slimy git. Hermione wondered what the odds were of being able to slip arsenic into his wine at the next business dinner unnoticed. He asked them to none what with the hard gaze of his fiancée and attempts to match. As she headed towards the ministry cafeteria, Hermione's thoughts were troubled with the fact that Theo and Pansy had the bizarre notion that Draco and Hermione had regular matching schedules. They surely didn't see each other that often outside of work means. They certainly weren't close enough for the promised couple to ensure that they'd RSVP together. Draco occasionally came around to her flat after work, yes, but that was only so they could bring the work home with them and not lose their stride gained in her office. How many all-nighters had they pulled to finish research? Or to write up field notes? Or to score through centuries outdated legislations? A light bulb went off in Hermione's head. Ah, that must be it. Of course, Hermione internally chuckled. Draco had been helping her plan and research the cockatrice proposal for the last couple of weeks. Hmm. Hermione supposed it could be why the invitation had been sent together. Theo, at the very least, knew how long-winded it could take for the legislation to be officially recorded as law. And thanks to Pansy's nosing through her files the other day, no doubt the little gossip had whispered Hermione's next case into his ear. They were primary benefactors after all. It was only logical for them to assume Draco would be forced to spend more time with Hermione during an active notion, hence the joint invitation. Hermione let out a delightful long sigh and enjoyed the tingle that spread through her brain at finally solving the little puzzle. She had spent far too much time thinking this over the last few days. And time was absolutely something Hermione did not have to spare on such frivolous matters. Harry, so help me Goodrick, you're not giving our child that horrendous name. His actions helped turn the visiting ball in our favour. Name one time he said anything even remotely nice to you that didn't involve your mother. He loved her all that time, Ginny. Ginny huffed. Her face had slowly turned as red as her hair throughout the course of this argument, and she threw him a scornful glare. Oh, yes, he had a child infatuation with your mother. She rejected him. In turn, he joined Death Eaters to spite her. So romantic. Not to mention the years he spent harassing Neville. Or do you not remember Snape being his greatest fear? He was a war hero, Harry pointed out weakly after a brief pause. So was Grob, Hermione spoke, tired and drained after hearing the pair argue for the last ten minutes over her second's future godson's name. The look Harry gave her could only be summed up in one word, betrayal. Ginny sat back in her chair and looked very much like the cat who got the canary as she grinned at Hermione, a protective hand gently rubbing over her rather pregnant belly. Albus Grob Potter, Ginny hummed, certainly takes the lead in my books. Harry gaped at his wife, and Hermione wondered if that was the first time she had ever seen her best friend lost for words since the day she befriended him back in the girls' lavatory. When Hermione decided to take a rare proper lunch break away from her desk, she hadn't envisioned it would be spent watching the parents-to-be arguing over what middle name to give their child. Her friends often complained about her lack of social interaction. Hermione, we work in the same building. How hard is it to meet up for lunch? Yet, on the rare occasion she did leave her sanctuary of an office, it likely meant she would be subjected to an hour of thrilling conversational topics such as Quidditch, Quidditch players, Quidditch leagues, vague references to confidential active oral cases Hermione wasn't privy to, and oh, that they see Brock Wade attempt the wonky feint last weekend. At least in her office she had her books. She had ancient wizarding law texts that needed translating, and most importantly, she had her ginger biscuits tucked away in her top desk drawer. Ah, her desk. Hermione felt her eyes glisten wistfully at the amount of research papers on her desk. If she listened closely, she was sure she could hear the papers calling her name. Hermione. Hermione. Hermione? Hermione? Harry waved his hand in front of her face, and she came to with a mild, embarrassed flush to her cheeks. 
Merlin, she hoped she hadn't drooled again. Oh, yeah. Um, Hermione glanced between the pair, hoping for a cue. She could always count on Harry Potter. You got any names we can toss into the hat? Hermione paused for a moment before her face brightened, research papers forgotten. Well, if you did want to go down the route of teachers who made an impact on your life, what about Professor Lupin? The Patronus charm saved your life more than a dozen times, and who knows, you might never have been able to master it in time if they weren't for his teaching. Albus Remus? Harry panned a blank look in Hermione's direction. Hermione flushed, sitting back into her seat. You asked for my suggestion, she defended. Better than Albus Novellus, Jenny muttered into her juice glass. Besides, Merfos probably already called dips on his good father's name, right, Hermione? How would I know? Her brow furrowed. She glanced between the pair, her eyes narrowed as Harry pointedly avoided her gaze. Well, if group's out of the question, and Hermione should have known better than to take a sip of a drink when she saw the twinkle in Ginny's eyes. What about Hagrid? As Harry's eyes near bucked out of his glasses, Hermione snorted, tragically at the same time as she'd swallowed, spraying her teeth back against the rim of her cup. She grimaced as she felt the hot liquid splash against her silk blouse. Bugger, that shirt had been a Christmas gift from Draco as well. Hermione's breath hitched as Draco trailed hot, open mouth kisses down from her breast towards her stomach. Her tummy jerked as his tongue flicked into her belly button, and she choked back a moan at the deep chuckle he breathed against her damp, sensitive skin. His kisses pressed deeper into her skin as he moved further south, and Hermione was unable to stop the soft whine that leapt from her throat as he tongued across her navel. She rose up to rest on her elbows, watched as his head dipped. Wait! Her hand reached out, gripping the silky locks between her thighs. Draco's eyes shot up to her in alarm, and he pulled away from her. Did you pick up my blazer from Twitter's dry cleaners? She watched as Draco blinked lazily at her, held his gaze as his head returned to its place moments prior. She groaned as he kissed across her right hip bone. Draco, I need it for my meeting tomorrow. Did it, did uh, did you did you pick it up? She gritted out and resorted to counting the cracks in her painted ceiling as she tried to focus on anything but a teasing tongue between her legs. Draco was quiet for a few moments, and Hermione twisted her fingers in his hair firmly. In the wardrobe, next to that offensive potato sack you call a dress, he murmured against her thigh and nipped at the skin gently in retaliation. Whatever words Hermione had planned to defend her wardrobe choices were cut off by a gasp moan, her spine arching as Draco's ministration returned in full force. Pansy still needs our RSVP, she blurted out, not a second later. Draco looked up at her incredulously and quirked a brow, no doubt in disbelief she brought up his engaged ex whilst they were... Ooh, but if Draco didn't look sexy at that moment... His gaze was hot and seared through her as he pressed soft kisses not millimeters from where her mind needed them to be. Just a little to the left. I'll send them tomorrow, dear. Draco smirked and Hermione barely had a second to process his words before her spine grew taut like a bow and all other thoughts melted away as he dipped back down in between her thighs, his lips right where Hermione needed them to be. Hermione grabbed the newly cleaned blazer from her wardrobe and threw it on, exacerbatedly pulling out her hair from where it got caught under the collar. Her wand, where was her? Her hands flew to her pockets out of habit, and she huffed, pulling out only the dry cleaner's receipt, tossed to the ground without a second thought, joined what was likely half of her wardrobe and drawer's content, half-hazardly discarded as she'd searched in near vain for a favorite cream button-up. Naturally, it had to have been stored in the last place she'd thought to look. What was the shirt doing next to a bunch of socks anyway? Hermione must have left her wound in the living room, she concluded, and in her hurried manner tripped over Draco's old Quidditch jersey and stumbled against the edge of the doorframe. Cursing and hobbling on one foot down the corridor, the smell of eggs and toast wafted towards her. Draco was attempting to read the morning paper, and what looked to be wrestling one arm against Crookshanks, who was trying his damnedest to pour the toast from Draco's hand. Every morning you pull this shit. Can I please just eat my toast in peace, you little... No, that's my toast. Piss off. Hermione glanced at the time on the clock and blanched. Oh, bugger, bugger, bugger. Draco, have you seen my... On the side table. Aha! Hermione pocketed her wand with a sigh of relief. 
She never could get used to the naked feeling she had without it. And my hung up on the rack. No, ah, uh, would you just die? Surely this is your ninth life, you mangy sinner, rodent. Crookshanks hissed viciously in response. She tossed on her outer robes. Rats, where's my... Right, just fuck, there, you happy? Evidently, Crookshanks must have won the toast war as he jumped down from the counter and came into Hermione's line of vision, holding what looked like a half-chewed slice of butter toast in his mouth and a satisfied gleam in his eyes. Draco, I don't suppose you know... Here, Draco replied, and Hermione fought the urge to snicker at the sulky tone of his voice as he held up her bag by the knuckles of his fingers. Hermione rushed forward, her fingers just clasped around the straps, and found herself barely a half distance away from Draco as he'd pulled the bag towards him, his lips encasing hers. She felt a firm hand pressed against the nape of her neck as she leaned closer to him, felt his deep groan as she let him deepen the kiss. She supposed, after he lost his breakfast to her pet, it was only polite. A moment too soon, she felt herself pulled away, a disgruntled moan escaping her mouth without permission, and her head, feeling very much like a bag of cotton wool, leaned forward to follow too. Have a slice of toast pressed against her mouth? Hermione's eyes popped open. Draco's amused grin looked back at her. Good morning, he murmured, his eyes focused on her lips as she chewed on the toast absentmindedly, her mind still reeling from the sensation of his lips on hers. She swallowed several times. Draco hadn't quite buttered the toast enough, admittedly, a little dry, before she replied a breathless, Morning! His eyes positively glinted as he cocked his head and a suspiciously innocent expression adorned his features. Ranger, he questioned softly. Hermione could only hum in response, her eyes very much focused on the crumb still on the corner of his mouth. She wondered how unprofessional it would be if she leaned in and licked it off. Aren't you late for something? Hermione jolted back so quickly she swore her spine cracked. Her eyes shot back to the grandfather clock in her living room and gasped in horror. She snatched her back from the snickering gits fingers as she rushed to the clue. Hermione knew two things for certain. First of all, she was, in fact, very late for her meeting. And secondly, barely catching Draco call after her that he'd sent their RSVP back to Pansy as the flames surrounded her. She was definitely not dating Draco Malfoy. Twitter's dry cleaning. Tokens reserved by Al only. Receipt number 53948DHR. Description Black Muggle Blazer Cream Linen. Total 5 gallons, 7 sickles. Collected by H. Granger's partner. Thank you for listening to today's chapter of Once More with Feeling by Wet Pretzel, read by Alan X. Mabella. If you'd like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on AO3, YouTube, or Tumblr. Thank you to Wet Pretzel for letting me read their story, and thank you to all of you for listening.